As video creators and commercial filmmakers, we don't often get the opportunity to shoot with a sensor larger than full frame. In fact, in our experience, we almost exclusively shoot with Super 35 format cameras. So when Fujifilm and the team at London Camera Exchange asked if we wanted to put the GFX 100S and its medium format sensor through its filmmaking paces, we obviously jumped at the chance. Getting a new camera in the middle of winter and during the lockdown certainly poses its own creative challenges. We didn't want to make a specs-based review of the GFX 100S, but rather wanted to show you how it performs in the process of actual filmmaking. So to do this, we rolled the creative dice and set out to make a fast-paced cooking video filled to the brim with that super shallow depth of field B-roll from that gorgeous medium format sensor. This shoot is going to require a fair amount of versatility and shooting options, as well as needing to be as portable and run and gun as possible. To cater for this, we opted to use the Fujifilm GF 32-64mm f4 for its width and small amount of zoom. For the more beautiful shots needed, we were lucky enough to get hold of the incredible Fujifilm GF 80mm f1.7, which I'll say, right from the top, is an unreal lens to film with. Medium format camera bodies aren't typically the type that you would associate with rigging out for cages for video work. And I'll say that with the form and ergonomics of the GFX 100S, it isn't actually needed. The body's shape actually resembles that of the Fujifilm X-T4 with that ergonomic side grip and a fairly light 900 gram weight. With regards to filmmaking accessories, you could comfortably attach a HDMI recorder like the Atomos Ninja V to this and squeeze every last inch of quality from that sensor. Doing this would allow you to record a clean HDMI output at a 4K 12-bit ProRes RAW video. For this shoot, we needed the handheld portability of using the two internal UHS-2 SD cards for recording. This will facilitate the capture of 4K 10-bit 420 at up to 400 megabits per second. And although this isn't offering the full post-production options of that 12-bit ProRes, this is plenty big enough to allow for a really high quality capture and edit. The first thing you'll notice when you're filming with this camera is how incredibly shallow the depth of field from that larger sensor is. When combined with that f1.7 lens, it's literally wafer thin. I know for interview or portrait style videography, this is going to be an amazing tool. And in truth, I'm slightly saddened that we're in a lockdown as I'd love to be filming some interviews with this setup. However, one of the key advantages of this shallow look from that medium format sensor is that I can stop my lens down further than I normally would, giving me even greater corner sharpness and more control of the light while still having a beautiful compressed and bokeh filled background. In some of the opening shots of the sequence, this is something that I'm really going to try and take advantage of. Anyone new to the Fujifilm family of cameras will find the menu systems reassuringly easy to navigate. In fact, I'd say that the general user experience is one of the smoothest with this generation of Fujifilm cameras. And when filming as a solo or small team, that is really important. As seems to be the standard for Fujifilm cameras of the moment, the IBIS system is out of this world, possibly the best on the market. Offering six stops of stabilization for handheld video shooting is truly amazing, giving gimbal-like performance from your handheld shots. As always, if you're looking to shoot with a tripod for panning or tilting, or use a gimbal for any movement shots, you'll likely want to switch this off entirely to avoid any unwanted jitters from that IBIS system overcompensating for your movements. There's a few key moments in this video where I need to break some filmmaking rules to get a key aesthetic. These decisions which are made in the storyboarding process are ones that you have to do with conviction as they can't be changed in the edit. First of those is shooting at a faster shutter speed than the 180 degree rule would normally allow for. Normally when shooting at 25 frames per second, 
you set your shutter speed to 1 50th of a second to make movement look as natural as possible. However, here I want a faster, slightly unnatural look to shots like this. As such, I'll set the shutter speed to double the norm at 1 100th. Finally, in the shoot, I made the aesthetic choice not to shoot in F lock. This is purely because I love the Fujifilm picture profiles and in particular the Eterna profile and will shoot with it whenever I get a chance. Of course, this does burn in a look and color to the image, but with that 10 bit 400 megabits per second image, there's still plenty of scope for pushing your color grading in post production, as you'll see when I get to editing this video together. Over in the edit now, our first job is to work through the clips and pick out our selects. And despite the large file sizes from that 400 megabits per second 10 bit footage, most modern computers will be able to breeze through the previewing of the files in real time. The same is true when we get to importing these selects into our timeline and clipping through to the desired lengths. All of this is being done in real time at full preview resolution with very little hesitation from my computer reading that codec. Now I have the rough structure in place to the music, it's time to push that footage and its codec a little harder. This is a very stylized and fast paced piece, so I'll need to be adding speed ramps to speed up clips that are too slow. And in places, I want to bring some of those clips into After Effects and add some motion blur and other finishing touches. Now, typically, if your footage isn't of a decent bit depth or if the codec isn't particularly friendly, this can be a place where your video falls apart. These clips though, are holding up really well to me pushing them technically quite hard in After Effects. Currently, our timeline only stands at 45 seconds long. Perfect for social media or as an advert, but the transitions will make or break this piece. Again, rather than relying just on straight cuts, I wanted to really stylize the transitions and push that footage even harder. For the straight cuts here, I want to use a glitch effect, which is from a preset pack I made earlier this year. It's actually available for free if you want to use it. I'm sure the guys at London Camera Exchange will put a link below for you to download. Again, this transition is fairly intensive a process and requires your footage and its codec to play ball with you. It also requires footage to overlap in your edit, having multiple clips playing simultaneously. So not always possible with codecs that are too clunky or not processor friendly. Thankfully, the footage from the GFX 100S is sailing through this challenge. The audio is gonna be a huge part of any video you create. This piece is clearly no different. I actually started my career as a sound designer. So for me, this is the section of the process that I truly love. We'll be using an assortment of created sound effects for elements like those glitches and whip transitions. Interestingly though, we'll also use some of the diegetic sound from the set that was actually recorded with the camera. For example, these knife pulls and scrapes, the can roll, and the dialogue at the end. Obviously, it's always advisable to record audio separately where possible, but it's encouraging to know that it was still very usable from within the camera itself. The final big job to do here is to affect the color slightly. Once I'm happy with how all the individual selects look in the timeline, I personally like to add a subtle grade over the whole piece, almost to act as a bit of visual glue tying it all together. I do this on an adjustment layer, where I'll push some of the footage even harder with the addition of a subtle LUT and tweaks to the Lumetri color panel as needed. For me, this part again has shown me how robust this footage is. Considering this was filmed internally as 420 10-bit with the internal profile baked in, it still holds up to the changes incredibly well and without breaking up. And that brings us to the end of our time with this incredible camera. It's been easily the most unique experience to film with a medium format sensor. And the GFX 100S offers this beautiful aesthetic with the combination of Fujifilm's current generation cameras, brilliant video capabilities. In truth, in the short time we had with this camera, we only managed to skim at its true potential as a video shooter. 
And if you're lucky enough to try it out, I know interview, talking headpieces, or landscape B-roll will be out of the world with the GFX 100S. So for some more information on this camera, there will be some links below. And before I go, I'll leave you with the finished edit of this ridiculously over the top cooking trailer. Thanks for watching. Things on toast.